Well, this is one of those videos that I make from time to time. It's gonna get you worked up, and if not you, then someone else. And look, I wish I could only make videos about social media trends and website design for churches because videos like that tend to make everyone happy. But if we don't confront and talk about some of the broader issues that we're gonna talk about in this video, if we don't confront the fact that Christianity has a reputation problem, then truthfully, all of the efforts that we put into communication, social, better websites, better services, and the like, those efforts will be largely wasted because those things don't happen in a vacuum, right? Like when someone lands on your church's website, let's say, they're seeing it through the lens of how they perceive Christianity and Christians as a whole. You need to be aware of that and what that means. Now, we're gonna skip the intro sequence today, but if you are new to this channel, my name's Brady Shearer, this is Pro Church Tools, and we're here to help you and your church navigate the biggest communication shift in 500 years because there's a lot to navigate. And we often talk about social media strategies, helping you learn videography, building communication policies, website, graphic design, branding, all that stuff. Helping you to embrace the digital tools at your disposal to take the hope of Jesus to the world in ways that were never even remotely possible in prior decades. And one of the best places to start is with my social media workshop for smaller churches. It's free, it's linked in the description. You wanna set aside about 45 minutes for the workshop. And in that time, I'm gonna give you everything you need from a social media policy, best times to post, post ideas, and more. Again, it's linked above me and in the description below. And the crazy thing is, we're still in the very early stages of this aforementioned communication shift. Change is happening at an outrageous pace right now. So it can often feel like digital has been around for longer than it has because of how quickly everything has changed, but it's still very young, basically the age of a teenager. So we're still figuring things out as we go, which is part of why the times that we live in right now are so tumultuous. And so let me make one thing clear as we begin. I don't have all the answers. I'm gonna be presenting some surveys, some data points, some studies, and it's also important to remember that individual data points aren't perfect tools, but as we begin to stack one after the other, I do think it starts to show us a clearer picture and present some red flags. Now let's start with an excerpt from the book, How to Revive Evangelism by Craig Springer. Now this book is infused with research from Barna, and here's one of those data points that leaps off the page for me. One third of non-Christians have said they would actually be interested in Christian faith if Christianity had a better reputation. Now this is fascinating because of all the factors that would have a non-Christian consider faith, this is one of the highest reported. Not more facts, not better programming, but let's examine this a bit further. What is this bad reputation anyway? Is it a staunch commitment to certain moral values or an old fashioned approach to family in a culture that's increasingly delaying things like marriage and parenthood? Not exactly. Now, as an aside, I should say that Christianity as a term is quite broad. So the term evangelical may be more suitable here. Of course, that's a term also up for debate in ways. So for the purposes of this video, we're gonna use the National Association of Evangelicals definition for what we mean when we invoke that term Christian or evangelical. It's defined as such. To be an evangelical is to uphold the Bible as one's ultimate authority, to confess the centrality of Christ's atonement, to believe in a born again conversion experience and to actively work to spread this good news and reform society accordingly. These four distinctives make up the traditional evangelical definition. Now with that established, let's begin to confront what makes up our reputation as Christians, as evangelicals in the West, most notably in America, but as a Canadian myself, much of this is also true of us and extends to other Western nations. Now don't get upset when you hear these things Okay, try your best anyway, and try not to infuse your own politics either. This is just data that was formed on surveys from people like us when we were asked questions or based on our own behavior. This is us, it's our reputation. So it's our job to be aware of it if we have any hope of reaching people far from God. Number one, more than any other religious demo in America, white evangelical Protestants support preemptive war, condone the use of torture and favor the death penalty more than any other religious demo. Number two, white evangelicals have more negative views of immigrants than any other religious demographic. Number three, more than half of white evangelical Protestants think a majority non-white US population would be a negative development. Number four, 
White evangelicals believe that Christians in America face more discrimination than Muslims. Now, you might be wondering, Brady, why do you keep talking about white evangelicals and identifying ethnicity? Why are we bringing that into here? Well, because black Christians have long resisted the evangelical label, so much so that just 25% of African Americans who subscribe to all four distinctives of an evangelical, the degree, and identify with the definition I shared earlier in this video, just 25% are willing to call themselves and label themselves evangelical, despite agreeing with all the beliefs. So three out of four black Christians are opting out of that evangelical label in part because its reputation is that bad. Further to that, why am I talking about white Protestants or white evangelicals in these data points? Well, because on nearly every social and political issue, black Protestants apply their faith in ways that run counter to white Protestants. So again, this is data gathered based on our behavior and our responses. The data isn't categorizing us based on ethnicity. We're doing that ourselves with our actions. Now, I know I haven't talked about sources for any of this data yet, which we need to do. This all comes from the introduction of the book Jesus and John Wayne by Kristen Cobes. Kristen Cobes, pardon me on the pronunciation. And here are the citations on the screen just now, but I highly encourage you to pick that book up and give it a read. It's very well researched. So Christianity has a reputation problem. What is that reputation? Well, using just the data in this video alone, that reputation has shades of racism, violence, warmongering, xenophobia, self-pity. And that's just the data in this short video. There's a ton we haven't even covered here when it comes to uh, clergy abuse, sexuality, and abuse of power, and so much more. Now, this is a very important part of the video, so please pay attention. Because I know many of you are tired of hearing Christians being called these things. You've had enough. Someone needs to stand up for our faith. And I'm not gonna tell you what to do. I will only ask you to consider this one thing. You may have your reasons for disagreeing with the conclusions that people are making about our faith. You may think this reputation is unearned, unfounded, unwarranted. You may even have explanations for why people perceive us this way. Here's the thing though. None of that will change Christianity's reputation. Your facts or reasoning won't change the optics. I'm trying to document in this video why the culture feels a certain way about us to help us all have a better understanding. But the truth is, the only fact that matters is the reputation itself because it's not in good shape right now. And it is this reputation that's keeping people from Jesus. Now, I personally find all of these gripes with Christianity to be fully valid. You know, we've got ample data on this. It aligns with my own anecdotal experiences and so many of the people I've talked to about it. But even if you think this reputation is unfair, which again, I don't, but you're more than welcome to believe it is, what matters to you more, protecting your own tribe or reaching people far from God? Because at the very least, you need to be mindful of how people perceive your church, your faith, and your pastors. Sure, you might be different, but that's not how reputation works. People are viewing your content, your sermons, your website, your social platforms through their own preconceived notions of the Christian faith. So it's imperative that you create content in ways that are mindful of this reputation. And you know, this isn't unique to us. Every creator on planet Earth needs to be aware of their audience and the biases and beliefs they hold. This is just the hand that we've been dealt right here and right now. So how do we respond? Well, really there are three options. You'll need to choose one. The more aware of which one you've chosen, the better. Three options. Number one, double down with the people on your side. This is the rally the troops option, the everyone else is wrong, we're right option. Frankly, from an organizational standpoint, it's almost certainly the most profitable and safe choice, not exactly aligning with Christ's posture to humanity from my view, but there's a reason why most churches and Christians are headed in this direction. Option number two, burn it all down. This is the systemic issues run too deep, reformation isn't realistic, we need to burn it all down and start from scratch, abandon the church and this model, it's fatally flawed. And then finally option three, acknowledge the flaws and work to rebuild. Now, obviously, this is the middle ground option that would seem most desirable, but perhaps it's naive. I'd like to believe it's attainable, but it does require us to set aside and lay down certain things about the evangelical industrial complex that we've had for decades. Most notably, I see intense conflict between the political and cultural power of evangelical Christianity and a desire to reform our reputation and work to repair the harm that's been done. I'm skeptical that both of those things can exist. So that demands some kind of divesting from power. 
And this brings me back to one of the first things I said in this video. I don't have too many answers for the biggest issues we face. Here's what I do know. Focusing on our little niche as creators in the church world, everything we make, write, design, publish, will be viewed with this reputation in mind by folks outside of our churches. To reach people far from God, we need to be aware of that. That's where empathy can start. And if we can get to a place of empathy, then that's where we can begin to think about reconciliation and repair. Now, of course, you might think this is all hogwash. And yes, I'm using the word hogwash because it's a Christian YouTube channel, but you know what term that's a stand-in for. And if you feel that way, again, that's okay. That's one of the three options I laid out above, the double down. And look, that might be the most popular of the three. You just have to also accept you're gonna struggle immensely with reaching people far from God. Now, perhaps for you, that's an acceptable cost for staying true to your convictions. It's not how I would do things. I'm choosing to naively press forward with option three of acknowledging the flaws and working to rebuild. Because I know the power of the local church and the power of Jesus Christ to transform lives. I've experienced it firsthand. Was there trauma along the way? Was there abuse of power? Was there necessarily uh, counseling and therapy that came afterwards for me and for so many of my close friends and family? Yes, but we've held on to our faith not willing to turn a blind eye to the systemic flaws in the system. In fact, I'm more than willing to call them out, like I am now, because I don't feel the need to protect Jesus or the local church. And rather than work to protect and cover up the problems at the cost of people far from God that need the hope of Jesus, I prefer to identify our failings in humility, acknowledge, apologize, and continue to work to make something better. And I hope that you'll join me in that. That'll do it for this video. I'm talk soon.